not believe that there is any gang involvement in this case. Edwards also putting to bed rumors about the second suspect they detained on scene outside the theater. Edwards saying that man was never involved in the incident. They have video surveillance that confirms that. RPD also asking folks out there if they were caught up in the chaos, running away from gunfire, running back into the theater and injured during the process to no longer reach out to RPD, but call Victim Witness Services at 804-646-7665. Outside police headquarters in downtown Richmond, John Burkett, CBS 6 News. Thanks, John. The driver of the tractor trailer that went off the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel Thursday has been identified as a man from Henrico County. Bridge officials say 36-year-old Christopher Scott was killed. The truck fell into the water around 2 p.m. yesterday and an immediate search began for possible victims. Bridge officials say they recovered the truck around 3 p.m. today and the Coast Guard says Scott was the only person inside. Police are still investigating what led to the crash. Repairs are being made to the curb and guardrail, and that's expected to be complete in a week. We're learning new information tonight about a shooting inside a Dollar General in Sussex County last Saturday. Investigators say three people were shooting, including a mother and son. Senior reporter Wayne Koval was the only journalist on the scene that night, and today he spent some time with investigators learning what exactly happened inside that store and why. Blue lights blur the night sky outside the Dollar General store in Jarrett last Saturday evening. Sheriff's deputies on scene less than three minutes after the first 911 call was answered. They entered that building without hesitation. They cleared the building. That's when deputies discover a teenager. They ordered him down to the ground and found out he had multiple gunshots to him. The sheriff's office says the investigation soon revealed the events unfolded as Monica German and her son Macarian German arrived to go shopping and the son recognizes a teenager near the front door. There's an ongoing issue between the, the teenager and the son. Um, they start exchanging gunfire right at the front door of the Dollar General. During the gunfire between the two. Mom was inside shopping. She saw the exchange of gunfire. That's when she started exchanging gunfire inside the store with the teenager. At the time, more than a half dozen customers and employees were inside. Investigators say more than a dozen shots are fired. Deputies say when the gunfire stops, the son leaves the store and the teenager and mother stay inside. One handgun recovered in the parking lot. The second gun was found in a microwave inside of a break room. Monica German and her son Macarian German both charged with multiple felonies, including attempted murder, malicious wounding, use of a firearm in commission of a felony, and shooting in an occupied building. The juvenile facing similar charges, including possession of a firearm by a minor, attempted murder, malicious wounding, and use of a firearm in commission of a felony. All three remain behind bars. While two handguns have been recovered and are being processed, the third handgun has not been found. Sheriff's deputies fear it could be used again. In the wrong hands and also if a juvenile gets it. We want to find a third gun. If you have any information about this shooting or where the missing handgun may be, call Crime Solvers at 434-594-4400. In Sussex County, Wayne Koval, CBS 6 News. Virginia State Police say they have taken a suspect into custody after a barricade situation in Henrico County early this morning. Police say the incident began as a pursuit initiated by the King William County Sheriff's Office. About 2.30 a.m., po state police say they took the lead of that pursuit once it entered Henrico. The suspect, 51-year-old Wayne Shearer Alvis of Henrico, was driving a Winnebago and eventually it ran out of gas on Glenside Drive at Bethlehem Road. Police say the Alvis barricaded himself inside the vehicle, but uh, he was finally taken into custody hours later, just before 8 a.m. Right now, he's being evaluated at a Henrico hospital. He is charged with eluding police, destruction of state property, hit and run, and assault on a law enforcement officer. 
Well, this weekend marks one year since the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, returning the issue of abortion access to individual states. Our Jake Byrne shows us what has changed since then and how the decision impacts Virginia in a unique way. 364 days back. The streets of Richmond look like this. The Supreme Court's Dobbs decision overturned Roe versus Wade, making abortion access a state by state decision. In the years since, the streets have cleared, but echoes of the ruling remain. Abortion is legal here in Virginia up to the second trimester, the only southern state without an early term abortion ban. The possibility that that could change a reality for advocates on either side of the issue. Virginians against abortion, feeling emboldened with Governor Yunkin in charge. Virginians want fewer abortions, not more abortions. He supports a 15-week abortion ban. The only thing blocking it is Democrats' control of the state Senate. Now states and now legislators have to actually show where they stand on this issue. And they can't hide behind that veil of Roe versus Wade. Todd Gackey with the Family Foundation of Virginia says supporting candidates who protect the unborn is the focus of their political action. I think that what voters should try to find out is, you know, how far and how extreme is is um, the pro-abortion side willing to push this issue. We know that it's impacted access to care, access to abortion, but it's also impacted access to miscarriage management. It's been bad for maternal health care. It's been bad for um, OBGYNs in, in states across the country. Jamie Lockhart of Planned Parenthood Advocates of Virginia says other states post Dobbs have seen health care for women suffer and voters reject anti-abortion measures. Lockhart says the ouster of pro-life Democrat Joe Morrissey in Tuesday's primary, just one example of where many Virginians stand. I I feel confident that, you know, Virginia voters are supportive of reproductive freedom. We know from polling that they're supportive of reproductive freedom. And so we'll be working with our supporters to make sure that they turn out to vote in this year's elections. Our political analyst says the balance of power here at the state capitol likely hinges on about a dozen truly competitive races. Governor Yunkin and the Dobbs decision will be a factor in that. Now it's time to legislate! The challenge for the Republicans is can they in Virginia overcome the argument that they are going to actually ban abortion that has been their um, nemesis, that argument, in state after state recently. Can somehow the governor shift that narrative and shift the narrative to his claim that the Democrats are not to be trusted? Jake Burns, CBS 6 News. I'm Antoinette Essa in Dory Park. This is where the Caribbean American Heritage Festival and Parade will take place. The festival is rain or shine. More on the festival and the charities and benefits coming up. June is Caribbean American Heritage Month, and one local nonprofit is sharing its Caribbean culture with the community this weekend. Antoinette Essa has a preview of the event in tonight's A-List. We're in Dory Park where this is the location for the third annual Caribbean American Heritage Festival and Parade happening this Saturday and it is rain or shine. We've got Tiffany Winstead and Ruben Pierre Louis to talk a little bit about it. So rain or shine this event is happening. Yes, correct. And Saturday, right? On Saturday from 11 to 6. Give me a little uh, brief uh, about what's going to happen Saturday. So we are going to have the parade from the recreation center and walk down here, and then the parade will kick off. And a parade of flags and costumes? Yes, flags, costumes, kids holding banners. Okay. And, and Tiffany, this event is, is, is put on by Adopt Haiti, Pro right? Adopt Haiti Project. Tell me a little bit about that and what you do. We're a nonprofit organization. We were formed 2010 after the earthquake. What we've done around the Richmond area, we've uh, partnered with a lot of different um, groups to do stuff around the community. Okay. Um, one of them is the Bouchard Middle School. We did a back to school book bag drive. Mm -hmm. And this year we're trying to change the tactic where we adopt a classroom because as you know, the students, they get the book bag. And yeah. then by November, the book bag's torn up or all the supplies are gone. <laughs> all right, so this Saturday's event will support that, right? Correct. This, yes. How can people support you if they can't make it to the festival? 
Um, you can give online. Um, go to adoptahpva.org, and there's a link to give. To donate on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, it is rain or shine, right? It is rain, rain or shine. shine. Okay. Thank you, guys, and hopefully it will not rain Saturday. We will not talk about rain. Okay. Uh, we're expecting <laughs> sunshine all day. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Again, it is the Caribbean American Heritage Festival and Parade happening Saturday in Dory Park. You can find more information on our website, WTBR.com.